Hey, what's going on, everybody? Drake Fire here. Been playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands over the past week as a uh, Graveborn and Spellshot. Wanted to share with you the build that I've been playing with. This is a pretty much a pure casting build, and it works with the synergies of both the classes really, really well. Absolutely insane DPS, and you can get through uh, level 20 elite chaos chambers absolutely no problems. So first thing we're going to do is jump in here and build the class together. Uh, first things first, doesn't matter if you're a Graveborn primary or a Spellshot primary, as long as you have both of them. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is grab Ambihextrus. This is going to allow us to cast two spells instead of having one of our other abilities. Now, over here on the Graveborn tree, we're going to max out Essence Strain. This is going to be really important to get that spell cooldown as far down as we possibly can. Then we're going to grab Dark Pact, followed by Stain of the Soul. Now we're going to come down to Ascension, and we're going to go and max this out. Now we've got one more point that we need to spend in order to get ourselves to where we need to be. As two points. So we're going to go ahead and take one point into Dread Covenant. That's just going to make our Demi Lich die for us sometimes. And we've got one more point we need to do. At this point, you could either put it into Dark Hydra and be able to spawn one Dark Hydra every time you cast a spell, but it's going to max out at one. Or you can go up here and just give yourself a flat 3% increase to your damage. For the sake of it, we're just going to take Dark Hydra this time around. Now down here for the way I've done this build, we're going to go ahead and take Lord of Edges, and you're going to see why that's so important later on. And then because we're a casting build, we're going to go ahead and max out Blast Gap. And then finally, we're going to want Morheim's Blessing. That's going to make sure that we can keep these kill abilities up as often as possible. Now, coming over here to the spell weaving side of things, of course, Spell Sniper is going to give us that spell critical hit chance all the way up to 60%, which is really good. And then coming down, we're going to want to go ahead and take Mage Armor. Then after Mage Armor, we're going to come over here to Font of Mana, and we're going to put 5 points into that to give ourselves another 20% spell cooldown rate. Then we're going to come down to Glass Cannon, and grab that for a 30% damage increase. Now at this point, we've still got 3 abilities left to spend before we unlock the next tier. So we are going to grab... One point into Prestigination. That's going to uh, just give us a little bit of extra reload speed. Now, we could take that one point and put it into Warcaster, which is another kill spell, which works great with the, or with the Morheim's Blessing Synergy. But I kind of like just having the flat reload rate over that. Or, I mean, even if you wanted to, you could get a little bit of extra fire rate because we are going to come down here to um, spell weaving. But this is the way I've been building it, and I've been having a, quite a bit of fun with it. Now, here on Magic Bullets, we're going to go ahead and take all three points into that. That's going to give us 45% of our spell damage into our gun damage. And then last but not least, we're going to get high thread count. That way, we're getting three more stacks on our spell weaving. Now, over in our stats, we're going to want to go ahead and max out our intelligence first and foremost. Then we're going to max out our dexterity. That way we're getting as much cooldown reduction, as much crit chance as possible. Now, at this point, I've played with going wisdom for extra status damage and strength for extra critical damage. And I find that the extra critical damage is a little bit better. And that's it. That is the build. You can see over here I'm mythic rank 101 and I am chaos 20 and we're gonna jump into some gameplay after we check our armor of course so for the weapons you're gonna want to try to get things with the enchanted on spellcraft cast increased damage by 15% for 10 seconds that's gonna help improve your overall casting damage and since we're going to be doing a lot of spell casting that's kind of important now down here for the spells, this is kind of one of the most important parts of this build. I really like Imminent Calamities and Ice Spikes, 
but what we're looking for is spells with a low cooldown, close to 10 seconds or less as possible, and multiple charges. As you can see here, this Imminent Calamity is a 10.7 second cooldown with three charges. And over here, just for a little bit of uh, variety, I've got the Budgeting Ice Spike, which is nine second cooldown and two charges. Now over here for our armor, it's better to prioritize spell shot over Graveborn for this, but this is what I found. It reduces our health down to one, and it gives us 150% ward capacity. That's the important part of it. And then right up here on our shield, we're just going to want to get a shield with the biggest capacity we possibly can and having 25% extra maximum shield. Now on our necklace, I was able to find one that gives another 20% shield capacity. Probably isn't the best in the world for DPS, but I really like the survivability that that brings. And then for our rings, we're just going to want to get spell damage. So let's get into a match and see what we can do on a level 20 elite chaos chamber. All right, so we're on the first level of the chaos chamber here. We're going to go ahead and spawn the elite. And you're just going to want to keep casting as much as humanly possible, pumping out that damage. And look at those absolutely insane crits. You are just going to drop everything that you come across. Huge damage to that coil. Over here we've got a Cyclops. They've got tons of hit points. Not anymore. You can see just the crits are over 10k on that. Closer to 20, sometimes 30. Just instantly dropping things out of the sky. They just do not hold a match, and you can pretty much cast almost non-stop. There's really just no limit to it. Because of the synergies of this build, you've just got massive damage coming out all the time. We've got our little Hydra there doing some work. We've got our Demi Lich out there helping us with some follow-up spells. Huge, huge crits. Tons of range. Little extra gun damage. Everything just falls over. There's just really so much fun with this build. Tons and tons of casting. It really is an Archmage build. Look at that. 20k crit right there at the end. And that was one. That's a that's a two-shot spell. So we definitely had double crits on that. We're going to come in here. We're going to just go ahead and take the hardest of it. It doesn't matter. Let's get some extra loot on this one. We're going to go ahead and set that to Elite. And we're going to jump on in. Now, because of your fast casting, every time you cast a spell, you're getting 10% of your shield back. And you can see we have 20,000 shield right now. Absolutely insane amounts of shield. That means every time we cast a spell, we're getting at least 2,000 hit points back. We're going to go... Oh, miss that one. Now, that's one reason that I like these Calamities, because they just don't miss. They are on their target. These elite hammerheads are notorious for having tons of hit points, and we are just absolutely flattening it right now. It just does not hold a chance to this build. You can see our shield is up to about 25,000 now as we cast more spells and we build up our stacks of spell threading. Oh, we got another hammerhead just chilling here, trying to get away. He thinks he can escape, but it's not going to happen today. Crackling prompts, another notoriously hard one. We definitely got a challenging one. Look at that dogfish. It's absolutely getting wrecked right off the start. There's just nothing they can do to stop us on this. We can switch up the weapons, get a little bit of fire damage going on in there if we want to. I try to keep one weapon of each element type just to spread it out in case there's a boss of shields or something like that we need to kill. But for the most part, you are just going to be the unalive champion of the universe with this build, and you are casting non-stop spells. Sometimes I miss, but it's okay, because we have so much spell cooldown that they're going to be right back up in no time flat. And this is a level 20 elite. This is as basically as hard as it gets in the game right now, and we just have absolutely no problem going through it. Look at that, just absolutely chunking these things down. And our survivability is 
absolutely through the roof because honestly there's not a whole lot that can burn through the amount of shield that we have and even if they do they are not going to be able to stop us from healing ourselves right now 25,000 shield that's 2,500 every single spell cast and we've got five charges right off the start and these spells they're pretty much going to replenish themselves and refresh be up again faster than you can cast them all so that's my build i've been having an absolute great time with this um i think it's probably one of the funnest ways to play the Greyborn with the spell shot and uh i hope you've enjoyed if you did make sure to follow us over on twitch i stream most days out of the week and also, don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe here on YouTube for more content. We appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time.